Thank you very much. Thank you and Joe and Steve for arranging this. I'll use a Hawaiian meaning, aloha kako, which means love to all of you. Thank you for the second Advent Award for Lifetime Achievement. That's a big thrill. This award is, is very meaningful to me. It will be used in my display in my award room in my home in, my, in Hawaii. I've got an award room full of awards <laughs> from everywhere. And it will be a highlight of my collection, of this, this award. I'm pleased to have four of my children, my four children, are here in, in, to share this special day with me. They all do great jobs in their communities. I'm very proud of them. Each of them works on something that's helpful for their community. So I'm very proud of them. And I'd like to uh, have them step up after I ask for their name. Wendy Watson. Wendy, where are you? <laughs> Jeff Bakken. Brad Bakken. And, and Pam Petersmeyer. I wanted to let you know that you can find a lot of information about my background on my website, which is kind of complicated. It's called EarlBakken.com. You can also find my autobiography, One Man's Full Life. It tells us some of the stories, life stories, about starting Medtronic. We started with two employees in 1949 in the garage, as you saw, in Minneapolis. And we had heating problems, <laughs> like you're having here in Chicago. Now we have 49,000 people worldwide, and I've tried to visit every one of them over the years. I am pleased that we turn out at least 40 devices in the cardiovascular and in the neurological field, and that's a lot of different devices. In December, one, we will be coming out with a second book of my life. And it indicates a lot of th th thrills and times that I've had and uh, that I go for. And I'd enjoy to get some, one of that second book. It covers many periods of my life and also the early and growing periods of Medtronic. Sales of this book will benefit the Bakken Museum. These museums are great, the Bakken Museum and the Pavic Museum, but we have to raise money to keep them going. In 1984, I started an organization in Minneapolis called Medical Alley. It's now called Life Science Alley, and I still c continue with some connection to it. I've heard it may change back to Medical Alley, which I like much better. <laughs> it's similar to Advent Med. It has been helping medical organizations in Minnesota for 30 years and has been growing actively. You are much larger and, and have organizational and cover the world, so that's, of course, a big difference. I admire that Apamed does for Medtronic. It's very helpful. 
and the, and, top, and the entire medical industry. It's good to have you working to support ethical business. My, one of my par early partners is here, huh? to, 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 that spends a lot of time talking about ethical business and that we have to see that businesses do operate ethically. And I applaud you for your work with FDA. Before 1975, the FDA was not regulating devices. I happened to meet a man at a meeting that was from the FDA at a meeting and he told me what they would do to Medtronic when they got control. And that, after that, I got drunk for the first time in my life. <laughs> in 1957, I made the first wearable pacemaker prototype for bought Dr. Lillehei using the new transistors that had been created a few years before. It took only four weeks from start to finish. I gave it to the University of Minnesota to test on animals. Then it was immediately used on a child that next day, and it saved that child's life. When I went there the next day, I walked by the um, uh, emergency room and I saw this girl that had the pace, this pacemaker I had made put on her and that gave me mixed emotions. It was kind of scary at first considering did we make it good enough to do that but also a great thrill to see what we had done with our hands. You know, today it may take up to 10 years for a new product from the final FDA approval. I hope you will continue to work with the FDA and so new products can reach the patients in a shorter length of time. I have also have over 30 other inventions that came before 1975. If you'd like the list of them, you can get that from Medtronic. Some of them come before, came before 1960 when I wrote the medical mission statement. This was a big breakthrough to write this mission statement for the company. Its first statement in our mission is all about patience. To alleviate pain, restore health, and extend life. This is just the most important part of the mission, and it continues to guide the company 50 years after I wrote it. Every Medtronic employee is directed by it, and it sets our company apart from other companies. They all have one in their pocket, some of the mission statement in their pocket, and they wear the medallion as I have on my coat. The third point of our mission talks about quality and integrity. This is extremely important and suggests mid-avamid mission and the code of ethics. I look forward to the joining of Medtronic and Covidian. It will help us extend the Medtronic mission to treat more patients in more ways, in more places around the world. And that makes me terribly thrilled to think of that possibility. It also allows Medtronic to invest more of its cash in U.S. medical tech innovation. I was proud to hear that Omer and Medtronic will invest 10 billion 
in US-based technology investments over the next decade. I have spent a lot of my time for several years working with integrative medicine that has to be added to the use of devices. A Hawaiian leader that I got acquainted with in, when I went to Hawaii, a Hawaiian leader taught me that the medicine should be 20% science and 80% spirituality if you really want to heal the patient. So we often give something from the 20% and forget to do the spirituality that helps the patient with integrative medicine. Our hospital in Hawaii was built using integrative medicine as our guide. It's an entirely different kind of hospital. We, in fact, have 67 different things that are different about our hospital that make it a healing instrument. Most hospitals are warehouses for sick bodies. They really aren't really built for healing. I have also spent time working with heart-brain medicine. That's a very important part of putting the body back together. This is also integrative medicine and is spreading around the world. In mainstream medicine, the body has been taken apart and studied in that way, studied as pieces. But the body doesn't work that way. Everything is connected in the body and interconnects with the other. We need to put the body back together. I have a list of 10 points on my website that talks about putting them back, uh, putting them ba back together. It's many ways for that integrative medicine can help patients heal. The healing is extremely important. Devices help patients but that falls in the 20% that is offered in, this, in this, that area. Most of you will see my list of 10 points fails to, together with the 80%. Medicine is no longer just devices and drugs. It is the human caring and the many methods to use a patient's mind and spirit for healing. The method instead of my 10 points can help a person heal. Then you, you can get that statement. And they don't need FDA approval on that project. <laughs> many, many of them use the power of the mind. And the mind is not just in the brain, it's through the body. A good book to read on this point is You Are the Placebo. So I challenge you to explore how we can help patients heal in ways that do not need FDA approval. There are hundreds of books and magazines available on integrative medicine. There are two that I like very much there one, the Mayo book on alternative medicine is very good. And the second is integrative cardiology, where I have an article on our hospital. Last year, Medtronic helped 10 million, 10 million point five million patients to have better lives. That's one every three seconds or every time you blink. This makes me feel wonderful. I just love to hear these stories. You can help them even more with integrative medicine added to their devices. I'm a patient myself. I have a pacemaker, an insulin pump, and stints in my heart. They have given me several years of extra life but it's the integrative health that I have successfully to that.
it helps, helps me keep going. I also use integrative medicine to keep me healthy. I've been able to live a full life and work to help others and support my community. We started the I Live On, I Live On, Give On program through medical Medtronic's mental, medical philanthropy. It, it asks people like me who live in the medical technology to use their extra life to serve others. Last year, 10 winners came to Hawaii to receive their awards. In January 2015, 10 more will come who we will, we will work with and, and have uh, we, uh, them get on the Live On, Give On program. My hope is that this message is supported to billions of people. I would like to see billions of people go into healing in the community or work in their community and we have people that are being given extra life, and yet we haven't gone on another step of asking them for help in the community. From here, I will turn home, my home in Hawaii. If you come to Hawaii, please visit me at my home office. We can talk there together and I'd love to show you my beautiful trees and flowers and everything's in, in our great nine acres of beauty. You can call my secretary on in the phone book or on your iPhone. <laughs> in the meantime, please join my uh, Facebook group called Earl Bach and Rocks My World. Thank you for the opportunity to offer some of the ideas about futures of healthcare. I hope your meeting goes well and I hope you find ways to kill the 2.3% excise tax. <laughs> on the rice company. You've got a great number of wonderful people here and out been talking and discussing how to do some of these things. Many great members for a special discussion. Thank you again for this Lifetime Award, Achievement Award. I am very honored by this award. And in mahalo nui loa, which means thank you very much. Aloha. Aloha.